Welcome back to your Algebra 1 Semester 1 review. Um, we're looking at problem 14 for this year, but as a reminder, the number that's up here might not be the same as the number that's on your paper, but if the problem looks like this, you're probably in the right spot. All right, now problem 14 is actually pretty tricky. Um, they are giving us two different lines, and I'm going to call them line 1, and I'll try to do that one in orange, and then we're going to do line 2 in green. Now there's at least a 50% chance I'll forget those colors, but I'm going to give it my best. Now we need to break down what we're actually trying to find because at first glance it seems like there is are two different things being asked for and you're actually right. They ultimately want to know what is the y-intercept. So we need to remember that all of these answer choices here are going to be y-intercepts. But that's not enough, because what is the y-intercept? Well, they're two different lines, and so they probably have two different y-intercepts. So which y-intercept do we want? Well, we want the y-intercept of the function with the greater rate of change. Now, the reason this is so hard is because we need to tackle the greater rate of change first and then find a y-intercept. So let's break it down. Greater rate of change. Greater is of course meaning larger and rate of change we see it abbreviated ROC a lot is really a fancy way to say the slope now why couldn't they say the slope oh there's all sorts of interesting answers but let's just chalk it up to them being confusing they want to make sure you know all sorts of different vocabulary this year so we need to find the larger slope which means we need to find the slope so let's start with line one Line one, they gave us two points. And a lot of times, the easiest way to find line one or to find the slope of two points is to use our slope formula. And don't forget, you're given this formula on your formula sheet on the test, um, but I'm going to remind it of you or remind you of it right now. Now, I'm putting parentheses around each of these because otherwise I think you'll find that you lose some different negative signs and that's never good. So, how do we start plugging things in? Well, I'm going to get rid of this right now and start labeling my points. 10 is my first x, 5 is my first y. Points do go x, comma, y. Negative 15 is my second x, negative 5 is my second y. Let's plug everything in. My second y is negative 5, my first y is 5, and my second x, negative 15, my first x is 10. And then we put everything together. Negative 5 minus 5 is negative 10. Negative 15 minus 10 is negative 25. Now, because we're going to have to compare, see which one is larger, and a lot of us might not be great at fractions, uh, you might want to change this to a decimal really quickly. And of course, we do that by remembering that fractions are just fancy division. So this says 10 divided by 25, top to bottom, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive. When I do 10 divided by 25 on my calculator, I get 0 0.4. So, 0.4 is the slope for line 1. Let's see if we can find the slope for line 2. Now, to find the slope for line 2, we're going to use a different method. And the method I'm going to use is isolating the y. And let's isolate the y first and then maybe think about why I did that. And I'm going to give you two reasons. So, to isolate y, um, I always, always, always like to make the y's positive first. And I know sometimes it takes a little longer, um, but I'm going to go ahead and isolate or make y positive by adding 3y to each side first. Now, don't let these operations intimidate you because there's actually not a lot of math. We're just practicing moving terms around. We don't need to combine anything because 6 and 3y those aren't like terms, but I am going to put the 3y first and then the positive 6 second. All right, well then we have to ask, is y alone? Well, certainly not. To get y alone, I have two things attached to it. There is a 3 that's multiplying and a 6 that's adding, but at least y is positive. I probably won't make negative mistakes now. So let's keep getting y by itself, and I'll do it first by subtracting 6. 4x and 6 are not like terms, so we keep them separate. 4x minus 6 equals 3y. And then last but not least, the 3 is multiplying, so we divide it off. 
Now, when we divide off the, uh, the 3, we need to remember that division and multiplication have to get distributed. So I'm going to distribute the 3 to each of these values. So we get a 4 divided by 3x, and I don't think 3 goes nicely into 4, so we'll keep it as a fraction, minus, but then 3 does divide nicely into 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And now we have y alone. But that equation should look really, really familiar to you. In fact, it should look a lot like m times x plus b. And it is an mx plus b form, which means we know the slope and we know the y-intercept. So the first reason this is useful, getting y by itself, is figuring out the slope. My slope here is 4 divided by 3. Is that larger than 0.4? Well, hopefully you're all saying yes, because the numerator is larger than the denominator. We know this is bigger than 1. But to check it, divide on your calculator, and you'll get that 1.3 repeating. So I'm fairly convinced that this slope down here is larger than the other. So am I done? Well, we need to take a look at this and realize that the y-intercept is what's being asked for of the function with the greater rate of change. The greater rate of change is the bigger slope. We found the bigger slope, and now we just need the y-intercept as my dog squeaks away at a squeaky toy in the background. So the y-intercept is this equation, or is found in this equation right here. And so again, the other reason that it was useful to isolate y is because it told us the y-intercept. So now, not only do we know the slope, we know the y-intercept, and we can probably answer the question. The y-intercept is negative 2, which in this case is A.